Who do we have here today? Of course, Dr. Payam! Woo! <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching and my extremely popular demand. And thank you again for your support. I will calculate the fractional derivatives of three functions, e to the kx, cosine of x, and sine of x. And you'll see that they're related. And not only that, I will also calculate imaginary derivatives. Woo! Mathematician gone crazy. Okay, but you'll see they're actually much easier than the previous video because consider, for example, the function f of x equals to e to the kx, where k is a constant. Okay. And again, k could be you know anything. You know, could be an elephant. I don't know. <laughs> it could be imaginary, real, negative, whatever. Notice we have the following. Suppose we differentiate this, and here let me use the D notation. The derivative would be k e to the kx. Okay. Suppose let's differentiate this again. D squared of x becomes k, and then you add another k, so k squared e to the kx. And if you continued like that, you would get k cubed e to the kx, etc., etc. And in fact, this would also hold if, you know, the, the differentiation is fractional. In fact, if you take the alpha derivative of f, that would be k to the alpha e to the kx. And the cool thing is, it's true not only for one half, but also for, you know, alpha real, you know, like one third, square root of two, but also irrational values and also imaginary values and negative values. So just to summarize, the alpha of e to the kx is k to the alpha e to the kx. In fact, some people could just say this is a definition of the fractional derivative, but let's just see if that makes sense in terms of the things that we talked about before. So in fact, if you let alpha to be one half, you get that the half derivative of e to the kx equals to square root of k e to the kx. Okay, let's just check it. Check it out. Okay. D of one half of d of one half e to the kx, well, that's d of one half of square root of k e to the kx, but because d of 1 half is linear, that square root of k, d of 1 half of e to the kx, which becomes square root of k times square root of k, e to the kx, and that's k e to the kx, okay? What does that mean? It's precisely the derivative of e to the kx. So what, in fact, as I said, that, um, that's consistent with the notion of half derivative. Half derivative means if you half differentiate twice, you get the derivative. So in fact, the half, de half derivative of the half derivative of e to the kx gives you the derivative of e to the kx. It does work, but the cool thing is, this is valid for any value of alpha. Okay. In fact, why, why don't we do something crazy, and let's calculate the imaginary derivative of, for example, e to the 2x. So, little example, let's calculate the i derivative of e to the, let's say, 2x, and you just need a little fact e to the ix, or e to the i theta, equals to cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. Okay, then, by definition, okay, k equals to 2, right, and alpha equals to i. So, by definition of the alpha derivative, d to the i of e to the 2x, 2x would be k to the alpha, so 2 to the i, e of 2x. But what is 2 to the i? 
Let's just rewrite this. 2 is e of ln of 2. And this to the i power e of 2x. That's e of ln of 2i e to the 2x. Hmm. ln is in all those videos for some reason. But look, this ln of 2, you can take it as theta. So it really becomes cosine of ln of 2 plus i sine of ln of 2 of e to the 2x. Well, so from a, a real function e to the 2x, we actually got an imaginary coefficient, so a complex coefficient. So it's pretty cool. And in fact, let's just get a little bit crazier. The party don't stop till I trust in. Okay, let's calculate the i derivative of e to the i x. Whoa, okay, so yo dog, let's do that. So a di of e to the i x becomes, again, a k to the alpha, so i to the i, e to the i x. That's what they meant by when they said an i for an i, you know, i to the i. But what is i? It's e of 2 pi, e of pi over 2 i, and you raise this to the i power. And then e of pi over 2 i squared e to the i x. And then we in fact get i squared is minus 1. So it's e of minus pi over 2 e to the i x. Whoa! Notice how cool this is. If you take the i derivative of e to the i x, you in fact get a real coefficient. In some sense, we took two real numbers and made them real. And we took two imaginary numbers and made them real. So how cool is that? Okay, enough excitement. Let's move on. So this was e to the kx. And now let's move on with cosine and sine. And you'll see even cooler things will happen. Okay, second example now, cosine of x. And you might say, how in the world are they related? How in the world are the cosine of x and exponential functions related? In fact, we need the complex world again. It turns out, if you calculate e to the ix and e to the minus ix, and you divide it by 2, in fact, we get cosine of x. And so, again, this relates example 1 with example 2. Now, let's see d to the alpha e to the ix, that becomes i to the alpha e to the ix. But let's just rewrite this a little bit. So i is e of pi over 2i alpha e to the ix, and that's e of pi over 2 alpha i e to the ix. But you can write this as e to the i x plus pi over 2 alpha. So which is cool, the derivative of e to the i x is still the form e to the i something. And let's take the derivative of e to the minus i x. That's with k equals to minus i. So I'm not chain ruling anything. Okay. So it becomes minus i to the alpha e to the minus i x. And let's do the same thing, but minus i, that's the same thing as e of minus pi over 2i, alpha e to the minus i x. And again, let's do the same spiel again. So it's e to the minus pi over 2, alpha i, e to the minus i x. And that becomes e to the minus i, x plus alpha pi over 2 alpha. Now, let's do the two together. So, the derivative of e to the i x is that, derivative of e to the minus i x is that, and then cosine is the average between the two. So the alpha derivative of cosine should be the average of the two. And that follows because it's linear. So, 
in fact, d to the alpha cosine of x is becomes e to the i x plus pi over 2 alpha plus e to the minus i x plus pi over 2 alpha over 2, which lo and behold, by reversing this, this equality, becomes cosine of x plus pi over 2 alpha. So just to summarize, the alpha derivative of cosine is just a shift of cosine. So cosine of x plus pi over 2 alpha. So maybe let me draw this as a picture. If you have cosine that squiggles like that, cosine of x. If you fractionally differentiate it, it's just the same thing as translating to the left by pi over 2 alpha units. So I don't have color here, but if you drew it in color, you would find that the derivative, the fractional derivative of cosine, it's just cosine shifted to the left. And you might say, hey, does that even make sense? I thought that the derivative of cosine is minus sine. And in fact, yes, it makes sense. And it's because your whole life in calculus you've been lied to. So let me show you the true derivative of cosine of, alpha, of, of x. Let me show you that in fact this does make sense. Look, because d of cosine of alpha x it should give you minus sign, but here alpha equals to 1, so by what the formula that I wrote, it's just cosine of x plus pi over 2, which becomes cosine of x, cosine of pi over 2, minus sine of x, sine of pi over 2. But this blows up, gives you 0. This is 1. And in the end, you get minus sine of x. So it does work, okay? So, and again, I think you've been lied to all your life because I think it makes much more sense to define the derivative of cosine as a shifted cosine. And again, just for fun, let, let me check that it makes sense with the half derivative. So d of 1 half of d of one-half of cosine of x. Well, with alpha equals to one-half, this becomes d of one-half of cosine of x plus pi over two over two, so pi over four. And then, technically I didn't check that, but uh, you can also show that if you diff fractionally differentiate this, it's like a shift. So it becomes cosine of x plus pi over 4, again, plus pi over 2 times alpha, so pi over 4 again, which becomes cosine of x plus pi over 2, which we've shown to be the derivative of cosine of x. So it also makes sense in terms of a half derivative. So this is correct. And of course, just a couple of remarks, you know, uh, similarly, the you know, same thing holds true for sine. So sine is sine of x, the fractional derivative of sine is sine of x plus pi over 2 alpha. And for this, we use the fact that sine of x is e to the ix minus e of minus ix over 2i, and the exact same thing works. And also, the cool thing is, that way you can very naturally define the half integral. So for example, the half integral okay, of uh, cosine would be the same thing, except you shift by minus pi over 2 alpha. So in this case, it would be cosine of x minus pi over 4. And that way, you can in fact check that the half derivative of the half integral is just a function itself. 
because the half integral shifts it to the right by pi over 4, the half derivative shifts it to left by pi over 4, and in the end you get cosine. Okay. And lastly, for my last trick, let's do the same thing and let's calculate the imaginary derivative of cosine. And you'll see there's a very surprising answer at the end. As I said, lastly, let's calculate the ith derivative of cosine of x. Okay. Well, with alpha equals to i, that becomes, you just shift it to the left by pi over 2 i units. But what does that even mean? No, now we can use the uh, double and the sum angle formula. So that's cosine of x, cosine of pi over 2i, minus sine of x, sine of pi over 2i. But it turns out there are very familiar values of those two. So cosine of pi over 2. I, again, using the formula with, in terms of exponentials, that's e to the i pi over 2i plus e to the minus i pi over 2i over 2. So that's e to the minus pi over 2 plus e to the pi over 2 over 2. So e of pi over 2 plus e to the minus pi over 2 over 2. And, oh my gosh, that's just cosh of pi over 2. And then let's do the same thing for sine. Sine of pi over 2i, that's 1 over 2i. Again, so e of i pi over 2i minus e of minus i pi over 2i which becomes 1 over 2i, okay. so e of minus pi over 2 minus e of pi over 2. But dividing by i, it's like multiplying by minus i. Okay. So you get minus i over 2 of this. But, um, and again, the reason of this is 1 over i, you multiply both sides by i, and you get i over i squared, which is minus 1. So this is why it's true. Okay, so you have minus 1 uh, minus i over 2 times this. And so you flip it, so it becomes i over 2. Okay, i over 2, e of pi over 2, minus e of minus pi over 2, over 2. And... Not oh my gosh, this becomes cinch, so that becomes i times cinch. Cinch of pi over two. Oh my cinch. Yeah, oh my cinch. <laughs> it's not a sin, it's a cinch, okay. okay. Di cosine of x becomes cosine of x cosine of pi over 2 i minus sine of x sine of pi over 2i. Okay. And now this cosine becomes, oh my gosh, so cosine of x, cosh of pi over 2. And then sine of pi over 2i becomes i cinch, so you get minus i sine of x cinch of pi over 2i. So how cool is that? The imaginary derivative of this cosine becomes this weird thing that's still expressible in terms of functions that we know from calculus. All right, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. If you like this fractional fun and want to see more exciting math videos, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Yay! Yay!